all right so so far i have created multiple videos explaining how you can use ai for coding okay i know most of the videos that i created involves coding the front end part of a web app okay and now in this video i'm going to specifically focus on creating a back end part so a lot of you guys have been asking me if it is possible to use ai for coding the back end side of the web project and yes that's indeed possible and that's exactly what we are going to explore today in this video and more specifically we are going to create an api that involves complex stuff like web scraping or data scraping proxy and stuff as such okay now if you're ready let's jump right in all right now what exactly am i coding you ask well i'm going to create an api that will go ahead and search for a particular keyword on amazon and returns details about the individual listings that appears on the first page of amazon okay let's say you want to get all the listing details of all the products that are currently ranking on amazon.com for a keyword let's say laptop okay In, uh, details like the title the url the rating the price the small description all these data we are going to scrape it using an api and we are specifically going to build that api okay and also by using proxy so let's see how all right so for this one we are again going to use cloud ai and i have already loaded the same and is everything all good to go and now before i begin this video i actually mentioned that we are actually going to use an api for web scraping stuff right now when it comes to web scraping or data scraping side of things using a proxy is very 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 important okay now if you don't use a proxy your machine so your server's real ip address will get you know will be visible to the whatever website that you're visiting and when you make repeated attempts to scrape content from a website there are high probability that the service or the website that you are trying to scrape data from will go ahead and block list or maybe rate limit your ip address okay now to avoid that from happening the best option that you have is to use proxy and performing web scraping without using a proxy is not at all recommended and as for proxy today we are going to use a service called tulip.io and now tulip.io is a great platform to get premium proxies for pocket friendly prices so if you are looking for a good quality proxy you can go ahead and visit tulip.io and sign up for a new account so once you sign up just go ahead and sign into your account and you will be taken to the dashboard page now if this is your first time you'll have to go ahead and buy a proxy for that you can go ahead and click on this option that says add more proxies and maybe if this is your first time you will find something like buy a proxy or add a new proxy kind of button so just go ahead and click on it and now you can find all the proxies that are currently available for example they have shared data center proxies dedicated data center proxies static residential proxies and rotating residential uh, proxies and also you can buy it for weekly monthly or quarterly basis now depending on your use case you can go ahead and buy a proxy from here okay now that i've already added and purchased as proxy you can find it here and we are going to use a rotating residential proxy for this purpose okay all right so now that we have the proxy done and ready i will open cloud and give it a simple prompt something like this create an api route in nextjs 14 app router typescript that takes a keyword as input and searches amazon.com for the same and returns an array of items listed for that particular keyword okay now we are specifically using nextjs 14 and an api route within nextjs because i also want to show this in the user interface okay so whatever data that i collect from the api i also want to simply go ahead and show it on the user interface and that's why i'm actually creating this api endpoint in nextjs 14 if you want to you can also go ahead and create a api in node.js or whatever other programming language you are comfortable in so it doesn't matter what platform or language that you're using you can go ahead and give a prompt something similar to this one and it should pretty much work okay so i'll just go ahead and click on send all right so cloud ai has managed to generate the code that we asked for okay now this is the prompt that we gave it to it and this is the api route or the code for the api route it has generated so the next thing that you got to do is to open up a folder in visual studio code and i'll go ahead and set up a next.js project okay so i'll go ahead and type npx create next app at the rate latest at dot slash to install it to the current directory so i'll go ahead and hit enter and why typescript yes eslint yes just hit yes to all the default values okay now let's just wait for a few seconds for it to complete the installation process all right so our next js project is successfully initialized so i'll go ahead and let's run npm run dev to start the development server and i'll go ahead and open it up in a browser all right so we have the boilerplate next js starting template or the page here so all you got to do is to go ahead and create a folder called api in the app folder and another folder called amazon search and inside of that root.ts and we'll go ahead and copy and paste the entire content so i'll go ahead and first copy the content i'll open visual studio code 
Now open the app folder and inside of it, I'll create a new folder called API. Now inside of it, another folder called Amazon, then search, hit enter and inside of it, a new file called root.ts. Okay. Now let's just paste the code that Claude has generated and I'll click OK. And now before that, we also need to install this Cheerio package. So I'll go ahead and copy the npm install command. I'll go ahead and open a new instance of terminal. I'll go ahead and paste this, click enter and let's wait for a few seconds. And Cheerio is successfully now installed. I can go ahead and click on Ctrl S and the import error is gone. Now to access the same, as you can see, it is asking us, you need to go to slash api slash amazon search and keyword is equal to whatever uh, search term that you want to search for, okay? I'll go ahead and copy this one and open here and I'll go ahead and paste it. Oops, let me fix it real quick. All right, so localhost 3000 slash api slash amazon search question mark keyword is equal to laptop. For now, let's just try searching for laptops. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And boom, there you have it. So let me click on Petify print. And as you can see, we have all the required details like the title, the price, the rating, the reviews, image URL, and also the product URL, okay? Now these, all these data that you see on the screen is actually from amazon.com, okay? Now if you open amazon.com and if you visit and if you search for let's say laptop and hit enter, so these are the listings that you can see and uh, the API that we created just go ahead to Amazon searches for the keyword and get the, you know, this title, this review starts, the actual price, the description, the product image URL and sort of stuff like that. And it will return the entire thing as an array. Okay. Now we can say objects of array. Okay. And right now we are not using any proxy to kind of mask our IP address. Okay. Now, if you repeatedly go ahead and continue the process of scraping data from Amazon, Amazon will just go ahead and block your IP address or just blacklist it. And you won't be no longer allowed to, you know, sort of access any services from Amazon. To avoid this, the next thing that you got to do is to just open Tulip. And I hope you have already purchased the proxy. Now, if this is your first time, you just need to go ahead and click on this option that says generate proxy and you can select the country and how many proxies and click on the add button. Now I've already done that step. So once you're done that, you can click on the show configured list and you can find details related to the proxy right here. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and click on node.js and I'll go ahead and copy this particular part right here. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and copy this code right here. Now I'll head back to Claude and I'll go ahead and give it a prompt something like, please use the below given proxy in the API and I'll go ahead and paste it. Okay. And now you need to replace something here. Okay. In the proxy, the auth string right here, you will have to mention the country, let's say US and as for number of session, let's just keep it three. Okay. Now let's just go ahead and hit enter. All right. So Claude has now given us an updated code using proxy. So let's just go ahead and copy paste and replace the entire content in the current file. So I'll just go ahead and copy this one from here. I'll go ahead and open Visual Studio Code and control a delete and paste the new code in here okay and now as you can see we are using the proxy that we got from tulip now so i'll go ahead and save the file and i'll return to here and this time let's just give it some other name like let's say iphone okay i'll hit enter and let's just wait and boom there you have it you have the complete list of amazon listings for the keywords iphone and you can see we have iphone 7 iphone 7 iphone 10 13 12 15 all these models right there okay so now that's how simple it is to go ahead and create an api that scrapes data from a website using proxy and display the same as the result of the response of the api now in this example i have used amazon you can go ahead and use pretty much any other website and give it a prompt similar to this one and it should pretty much work but do not forget to use a proxy okay otherwise your real ip address will get blocked and it will be you will have a tough time fixing that one and now that we have the data for this one, let's just also go ahead and create a user interface where we can go ahead and visually use this API and also display the results that we got in a, in a nice way on the UI. So I'll go ahead and open Claude and I'll go ahead and give it a prompt something like create a beautiful and modern looking page where the user can enter the keyword in an input field and get all the details from the API displayed in a nice way. I'll go ahead and click on send and let's wait for a few seconds. All right, so it has started generating the code and once done, we can go ahead and copy and replace the content in our existing code. 
all right so this is how it will look like so it does not really make any sense but i'm just showing you how things work okay so the first thing that you got to do is to install these npm package this is basically uh shatsy and ui stuff and as i can see this particular package right here is incorrect so i just went ahead to the official documentation of shatsy and i got the actual uh you know command that you need to use so i'll go ahead and copy this one and i can open up visual studio code paste it here and hit enter and as you can see i previously tried adding the command that a uh, cloud has given me and it just failed and i refer to the official documentation and this one is the correct one so i'll go ahead and hit enter enter nope and yes and now we need to install input button card and alert so let me just make sure what is the uh, actual code okay so this one is right here so go ahead and copy and let's just open visual studio code paste it right here so we need to install button first let's do that first next let's do input next alert next cards oops is it card all right card okay now we are done with that let's just go back and now copy the code for this one okay so i'll go ahead and copy this one click on code and i'll just go ahead and copy this one and now i'll head back to visual studio code replace the content inside page.tsx like this and i'll also add the use client directive since we are using uh, hooks in this one so that's it so let me just go ahead and open localhost 3000 and there you have it let's just go ahead and enter something okay let's say laptop hit search and boom there you have it all these things that you see on the screen is actually from this api that we created earlier okay now what happens is that whenever we goes ahead and enter a keyword in here and click on the search button a request will be fired to this api right here that is within our next.js project so if you want to you can also go ahead and create this api route in a separate uh, server okay maybe uh, express server that you created yourself or maybe a server created using some other techniques and the api will go ahead and return these result right here and now our front end component will go ahead and take all these data like the image url and display it the title the price the average rating and also link to view the same on amazon let's just go ahead and click on a random view on amazon link and as you can see it will go ahead and open the product listing page and as you can see the pricing here is 176 and that's exactly the pricing that's shown in here as well where is it yeah so 176 and the rating is 3.9 and as you can see the rating is also here 3.9 and we have 1700 reviews and the same right here so almost all details are exactly the same and accurate for that matter now let's just try a different product let's say smart tv hit enter searching and boom there you have it now just as to make sure the proxy is actually working i went ahead and asked the ai to modify the front end code such that it displays the ip address of the proxy that we are using and as you can see the proxy is indeed working and you can find the ip address to the top right here all right all right so that's how simple it is to create a kind of like a full stack application which involves api proxy web scraping front end stuff and a whole lot of other things using ai now this thing that i've shown you here is just for the demonstration purpose has to how to employ web scraping how to use proxy within an api how to create an api route how to display it on your user interface how to give an input and all sorts of stuff like that and now we can go ahead and if your use case might be different right now in that context you can go ahead and update and modify the prompt that you give to the ai tool like cloud b0 you can go ahead and pretty much use any other ai tool for that matter so you can go ahead and give prompt to that one and it will generate the code you can go ahead and set up a project add it to the project and you can get going from there and now depending on the complexity and the type of application that you're trying to develop the kind of steps that you need to employ will differ a lot and also you might run into some errors as well now when you find or when you encounter some errors all you got to do is to copy the entire error and then go ahead and paste it to the whatever ai tool that you're using and just say i'm getting this error fix it click enter and the ai will give you updated code and you can go ahead and paste it and fix the errors that way okay and now when you're doing stuff like web scraping or data scraping it's very very important that you use a good proxy for that matter okay now if you don't use a proxy your real ip address or the ip address of your server will get banned or blacklisted from that whatever uh, website or service that you're trying to access and all the resources will be blocked and you won't be allowed to access the resource on that particular server so it's important to use a good quality proxy like one that is offered in tulip and depending on the 
complexity and how frequently you want to access the you know content on a specific server you can go ahead and use different proxy maybe even a rotational proxy so that a new proxy is used every time you fire up the api so yeah that's pretty much all i wanted to show you in this video so i hope you guys found this video if yes make sure to subscribe to the channel like the video share it with your friends and i'll see you in the next one